My name is Derek and today I'm going to be showing you something really cool that's happening in the industry. And that would be this new display. Now one thing that you might notice if you look close enough is that it does not have the display I see on it. And one of the other cool features is this flex cable is already lifted. Now if you don't know why those two things are important, then this video will help you understand why. And this will also make those of you that already know extremely excited. Let's get into the video. Given that this display doesn't have an IC on it, it's going to be much easier to transfer the original IC to it. One of the things that we found through our research is that heating up the display IC above 240 degrees Celsius can cause damage to the IC. And I recommend using something around 220, maybe to 230, but never exceeding that 240 mark. The other thing that we found works the best for transferring these display ICs is to use a 138 solder paste when reballing them. And one of the coolest things that's being implemented is this little white sheet. Now from a first glance and feel, it doesn't look like much, almost just like a little thin foam sheet, but it's actually quite heat resistant, which allows us to put it under the flex here and protect the display from any of the heat without using metal shields or any of the other things that we need. So this is the only thing that is needed to do this properly. Having the display prepped and ready like this makes this repair so much easier. And Mobilecentrix has taken the time and the risk to remove the ICs from these displays so that you can transfer them to them without having to do that extra step, which is risky. Now let me show you what this takes. Here we got a 15 Pro Max display. As you can see, it's pretty far gone. So we're going to extract this IC. First, we're gonna turn on a heat map. We'll let this cook for a little bit. I'm gonna come in with some isopropyl alcohol and we're gonna lift this flex, just so you can get an idea of how difficult this flex is to lift. We've got this fairly warm. I have some isopropyl alcohol here. You better pray that I don't see your face at any place that I go. I know you hate that. I've been doing fine. I'm not wasting any more time. I live for the fight and the climb. And I think that the pain that's deep inside is what defines. So I won't give up. I'm gonna make it to the top. I don't care what's in my way. I swear I'm never gonna stop. I could fall flat on my face and I swear I will. Now, as you can see, this isn't always pretty. It isn't easy. That's why it's so nice that that process is already done on the display we're transferring the IC to. And because I don't care too much about this display, I'm just gonna use a metal sheet to isolate it just so that it doesn't stick back down to the display. And I'm going to heat it up to around 220, 230 degrees Celsius. I'm not gonna try to get to the 240. I'm gonna try to work around 220 to 230 so that I can remove the IC. I'm gonna carefully go around the perimeter of the IC and scrape off the underfill. Using that same process, we'll be able to then push under the IC while everything is still hot, while maintaining heat directly on it so that we don't pull any pads and we're gonna be able to pull the IC away from the flex. Now I'm gonna carefully work under this scraping and pushing as I feel it release and feel the solder melted. If you haven't noticed, I have switched to a larger nozzle so that I can get full coverage on heating up the entire IC so any movement won't cause any pads to be pulled. Now it's time to transfer the IC to a little jig where we can remove the remaining underfill, cleaning up the bottom of the IC, prepping it for a reball. I'm gonna go around with a 138 solder paste, really break up all of the underfill that's on the bottom of the IC. Using some wick, we'll go ahead and absorb all of the remaining solder. And push off any of the remaining underfill. And then with some isopropyl alcohol and a brush, I go ahead and clean it up. Once we've cleaned it thoroughly and it's free of all debris, we can then line up our stencil, apply a 138 solder paste, and reball it. Now this is a little tricky because I don't have a stencil currently that has the right dimensions. So the one for the 14 series covers all but one row. So we'll reball it and then I'm going to have to reball the one row. Well, let's pull it off and it looks like this one didn't quite stick but with a little enough heat we'll get it to snap into place. And now I've put the eight balls here that aren't lined up. We'll nudge this one back into place, heat it up and now we've got that row and this other one was being stubborn too. 
Now you can see it's all nice and clean, ready to go. So now that we've got that reballed, we take out our little foam insert and we'll slide that on in right here. But you also need to be careful not to hinge this up too much because you could potentially damage the flex against the metal uh, against the metal frame right here. So we'll push this in all the way, just like that. Add a little bit of flux and we'll spread it around. Line up the dot in the same corner that it was on the original display and proceed with soldering it on. Of course, maintaining less than 240 degrees Celsius so that we don't damage the IC in any way. We'll line it up, solder it on. Once it gets up to temperature with the proper amount of flux, we'll be able to give it a little nudge and see it snap into place just like we would on any other IC reball install. Now that it's soldered on there, I'm going to take a second to try to clean up some of this flux. Get some isopropyl alcohol. Remove the adhesive backing that's below the flux so that the flux can stick down to the back of the display like intended and then we'll be able to install this on the phone. Now one thing to note, exceeding the 240 degrees Celsius not only can damage the IC, but it can also severely warp the flex cable during install. And having a warped flex cable will pretty much ensure that the IC doesn't get installed properly because the solder balls will not be able to pancake properly across the entire IC. There are some tips and tricks that I have for ensuring that it stays flat that I'm going to talk about in a future video. So make sure you like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on that information when I'm able to show it. Hopefully this video has been helpful. Like and subscribe and leave a comment below if there's anything else that you want to see in a future video. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.